Hashem, you have the schuz to begin. Tyrus Samachai. The limud, of course, of the Shia is look at the halachas. We're going to learn the Tilsidaim Shachris, Halacha Dalad. But of course, in order to be able to in order to be able to understand what Nosson is talking about, we have to at least have a te'ima, a taste of the Torah upon which this Lukut Elochis is based, which is Samachai. Over the past few days, I, I, I met a couple of you who asked, is it true that we're learning Samachai? I'm, ass- I'm assuming that you understand that Samachai, I mean, it's like that with every Torah, but Samachai in particular is one that that addresses the entirety of life who we are in Lukut HaLochis I'm just going to mention to you now the Inyonim that we're going to be touching upon in this tire from Rabbi Nassim we're going to be talking about sleep favorite pastime of most people here in America we'll talk about sleep we're going to talk about Yisurim suffering his chadshas, renewal, Hanukkah, the Kedusha of Yosef HaTzadik, Tzitzis, the Indian of Tchelas and Tachlis, Tachlis, that's what this Torah is about, Tachlis, to be able to live with the Tachlis and to remember the Tachlis of our lives. Tfilim, Malbushim clothing, Chatzais, these are the inyanu that we're going to be discussing in the Torah that we're going to begin probably next week or the following week in Lukate Halachas. But we have to begin with this Torah, the Yom Abayaz Al Rus. First, it's always important that before we learn a Torah from Lukate Maran, that we understand the setting in which the Torah took place. And here, where the Torah begins with the Indian, the Indian of the Tzaddik, the Tzaddik, the Baal Hasada, who was Mesakein, Neshamis, and the ability of the Tzaddik to be Mesakein, Neshamis, of those who are living and those who are no longer living. There was a very specific setting in which this Torah came about. So almost all of you are familiar with how Rabbi Nachman's Torahs are, are often, if not always, a response to a particular Indian that's happening then in the world, in his life, in the life of the Chassidim, in our lives. And there was something here. I'll share with you, before we begin the Torah, I'll share with you what's found in Chaim Maharan. So over the course of a few ices in this new edition of the Kutta Maran, the parish of Hamasifta, so he brings from different places in Chaim Maharan and Maranat to understand what brought this Torah about. Where did this Torah come from? So I'll share with you a little bit. And, and we'll begin and we'll learn a little bit not going to learn the entire Torah just learn Yaneinu to help us understand Rav Nosson Lekut HaLochis In Chaim Aran we find the following I'm just reading to you from Chaim Aran that this Maimur Vayom Aboy Azarus this Torah Samach was said in the summer of Tov Kuf Samach Vav of 1806 which is a very short time after the Petira of Rabbi Nachman's son, Shlom Ephraim. This child, this child Rabbi Nachman saw in this child the hope of the future of all of Klai Yisrael, the Yeshua of Klai Yisrael. And his death was a turning point in the life of Rabbi Nachman. And when this happened, We've, we're told in, in Chaim Aran that Oz Omad Lefan of Mareinu Harav Rabbi Nosson, the Moed Echad Al Haliyah Shahayla Admas Atzal Al Beisai, that Rabbi Nosson 
was standing with someone else upstairs by Rabbi Nachman. The Ha'adma Zatal Sipa Imam Migadl Tsaarai Vyasurim Shalai Hagadarlam Shiyeshla Mikal Tsadam Itside Tadam. And Rabbi Nachman, in a very uncharacteristic characteristic way, began to pour out his heart about how, how much he was suffering. Because Rabbi Nachum was filled with terrible, terrible suffering. And Rabbi Nachman said, when he was describing the Yisurim that he had, following the death of the child, so Rabbi Nachman said, how could you possibly understand? The terrible tragedy. How the world is completely broken. Through the estalkus, through the death of this child of my son, Shlom Ephraim. He said, my entire heart is broken and is ripped out of its place. And the holy tears began to pour out of Rabbi Nachman's cheeks. And Rabbi Nassim and the other who was there, take if they were so, they were so frightened and taken aback by what Rabbi Nachman was saying. That they felt very uncomfortable and embarrassed. That Rabbi Nachman was crying in their presence. That it seemed to them Ke'ilu, the entire world, was being destroyed, was turning upside down, was being destroyed. And it's explained elsewhere in Chaimaran. That it wasn't only his personal grief. Rabbi Nachman was expressing the the grief, the shever of the entire world, of all of Am Yisrael and the entire world, because of what could have been with this child, Shlom Ephraim. Aleph. V'achakach b'yoyim sh'achizeh sh'ahayu b'yoyim shishi erev Shabbos Kodesh Amr lehem Rabbi Nachman said to them the next day erev Shabbos. The maimah that we're going to learn the subject of this Torah is And there's a tzaddik who's called the Baal Hasada, the master of the field. And the master of the field is Mashgiach was trying desperately to find a takana, a tikkun, for all of the trees, for all that exists in the field. And because the Baal HaSada, there are very few such tzaddikim who have the ability to be misakim, the Nishamas. And because of this, the Baal Hasada has to live through terrible, terrible suffering. I even love Yisur Mahabe Bli Shir Achmar Lutzla. Vuhuba Gaidal Kaichai Oiva Al Kula. The Baal Hasada has tremendous Kaich. And he's able to survive all of the Yisur. Vaisa Pula is Hasada Kamashat Sarah. And he tends to the field, the field of souls. Kamashat 
And we always deeper harbor me in Tikkun and Neshamas. After the child died, and from the time that he said this Torah that we're going to learn, Rabbi Nachman spoke a great deal about Tikkun and Neshamas, repairing Neshamas. Ubefrat Achish Abami Lemberg, Ubefrat Bekni Sosla Uman. And especially from the time that he came to live in Uman, which is the end of his life. Shekol Kni Sosla Shom that the very fact that he came to Uman, and that he wanted very much to die there. That's why he went to Uman, to be mistalik in Uman, to die in Tavkin Uman, to be buried there. All of it was with this purpose. To help the Nishamas that needed a Tikkun Ready for hundreds of years, the shamas that were in need of a tikkun. Ki shomba uman, as you all know, because in that place in uman, nergu nefoshes rabbis belishia. Many, many, many Jews were murdered. The kami yeladim alafim uravavis. Thousands and tens of thousands of children were murdered. Shenergu kaidem zman. And then in Yemena Maranat, Rabbi Nassim says that Be'uman Be'yoyim Echad Lefnei Ha'yoyim Shil Stalkul Sezah. And in Uman, the day before Rabbi Nachman died, Ha'yashoychev al mitosu b'chalish z'gadom ha'oyed, he was in bed, and he was very, very weak. And the honor of Omer Laharav, Rabbi Nassim, he said to Rabbi Nassim, Ha'ata zoycha ha'maisa shisipayat l'cha b'knisasi l'uman. Do you remember the story that I told you when we came, when we moved to Uman? about how the Baal Shem Tov came to a certain place where there were many fallen souls in that place and how the Baal Shem Tov had to bring a tikkun for these neshamas and the Baal Shem Tov understood that it's not possible to be mesak in these neshamas because because the Baal Shem Tov knew that in order to be Mesach in them, that he himself would have to die. And then Rabbi Nachman said, "Sheish kan bo umin ribay revavus revavus harbe harbe shem neshamas shoyn dem ata sviva." In this place in Uman, there are thousands and tens and tens of thousands of neshamas that are surrounding me. She yisak them that I should be Mesach in them. And because of this, I have all of the terrible suffering that I'm going through. And afterwards, Rabbi Nassim says, Hesev is pon of Ketsas el Hakir. Rabbi Nachman turned a little bit to the wall. Pirus Yod of Ketsas. He spread his hands a little bit. Koimer, as if he was saying, Harini Moise Nafshi. I'm prepared to die for these neshamas. And I'm prepared to go through anything. For Hashem's sake. And the Melusin says, I can't find words to describe what happened at that time. And then, in the night of the third of Tuesday, which was the day of, of, of Rabbi Nachman's Ptira, the last day of his holy life. And Rabbi Nachman began once again to speak about the Neshamas that needed a tik on the Neshamas of those who were killed especially the children of Uman. There are many dinim in this place, and there are many kedoshim in this place. And on the Harav, Rabbi Naftali Zav Omalai, so Naftali said to Rabbi Nachman, Rabbeinu Haloi Martem b'maymer v'yoyma boya zal rus, but Rabbi, you taught us in this maymer, Samachai, that tzaddik ha'god la'muflag b'may l'ma'oid ma'oid, that the great exalted tzaddik, the Baal HaSadr, Yochel Ligmer Ha'inyin B'chayev, 
that the Baal Asada, the master of the field of souls, can finish the Indian of, of being Mesak and the Nishamas during his lifetime. And Ibn Achman said, You know, Ibn Achman's all Bechinas. So Ibn Achman said, I was talking about a certain Bechina, a certain aspect of Tikkun HaNeshamas. But the Hechrich, but it must be that ultimately, ultimately the Baal Asada must Leilach L'Stalik Bishvil Zeh must die in order to bring a complete Tikkun to these Neshamas. He took the key to the he took out the key to, to the the piece of furniture that's there, the desk, whatever, and Nosan Laham he gave him the key. Siva Laim he commanded them, Shatekev Shayistalik, that as soon as he dies, Baida Yeah Munachal Aritz, while he's still as the mace is placed on the ground, while he's still there on the ground, Yichul Kolak Sovnim Tsayim Sham. They should take out all of the pages, all of the ksavim of his writings that are in that uh, desk and burn them all. And he warned them that they should be careful to do this. They took the key and they were terrified. They were trembling. And filled with tzar. Listening to what Rabbi Nachman was saying. And they began to whisper to each other. Why, why, is, why, is, why is the Rebbe preparing himself to die? And on of Omar and Rabbi Nachman said to them, You don't have to whisper. You could talk openly about my death. I'm not afraid at all to die. You don't have to whisper, I'm okay. For Chakach and afterwards, Omer Lehem. Maybe you're worried about what's going to be with you after I die. My Yeshel Chem Ludaik. You don't have to worry. Kshani Herlech Lefnechem. Ma Eluhan Nishomis Lahoyim Akir Maisi Kla. Madach the Nishomis, these Nishomis and Uman of those who have died. Shalahuyu Makir Maisi Klahu didn't know me, they weren't living at our, in our time, in my time. And Haymit Sapm al Tikunim Shali, and all they're waiting for are the Tikunim that I'm going to bring for them. Mikol Shakinat them, so how much more so? I'll be Masakin you, I'll help you. Eloan Lofu Shemesu Mikoidim Yemoim Yeshez Yegiyev Achula Aval Atem, it's very hard for me. The koiches that I have to pour into fixing these neshamas from so long ago. But you, the chesidim malachem lidoig, why do you have to be worried? You don't have to worry. I'm going before you. And you needn't be afraid whatsoever. And th those were the moments leading up to the histalkas of Rebbe Nachman. So this Torah that we're going to learn at least a part of is inseparable from the from the estalkos of the tzaddik and what the tzaddik saw as his ultimate responsibility in this world and as we'll see in the world beyond this world and it's very much of a Yerusha that he left us this Torah Samachai before, before the estalkos So let's begin. By Yemer Boaz al Rus. Hello, Shemat Biti al Telchi Lilkai Besada Acher. And Boaz said to Rus not to go gather, not to work in any other field. To stay here, not to go away. Your eyes should be upon the field, this field. And the harvesting the of this field. And I have commanded, Boaz said to Rus, I, I commanded the Norum, the guys that work here, not to touch you. 
Vishasis me asher yishavun hanorim, and if you're thirsty, you can go there to drink from the water that the norim drew out from the well. Da. So Ibn Achman says da. And you know that when he says da, he's taking this Torah from the highest place? Whenever he says da, it means he's taking from Amish Matzilus the Torah from the highest place. Da kiyes sada. You should know there's a field. And in the field they grow beautiful trees and beautiful grass. And the beauty of the field, the gidulov and what's growing there, it's impossible to, de to describe the beauty of the field. Fortune is the eye that has seen it. And the trees and the grass that grows in the field are the holy neshamas that are growing there. And in the field there are there are many souls that are naked. Neshamas arumais. That what they did on, in this world, they didn't complete what they had to do in this world. And they're naked of mitzvahs, of Torah, of Yashamai, whatever that. Arumim. Shem noim venodim mechutz lasodim. And they're going, noim venodim, they're, they're wandering outside of the field. Umam tinin umitzapim al tikun. And they're waiting and they're longing. These neshamas for a tikun. Sheyuchlu loshu v'lechnois el makayma, so they'll be able to return back to the field. They can't find themselves in the field, in the sada, and so they're wandering outside, and they're desperate for a tikkun which will allow them to return to the field to the sada. V'gam afilu neshama gedayla. Sometimes there's even a great soul. Shabbat Lim Kam and the the soul of a great person upon whom other souls are relying and depending. Even this great soul sometimes leaves the field. And and even this great Neshama who is taking care of other Neshamas. Get stuck outside the field. Kosher, it's hard. Koshla lachzal neshama. It's hard for this neshama of a great person to return. It's not because of all the neshamas that are connected to him. And all of these neshamas, the neshamas that are arumas that are naked, and the neshamas even of great people. All of them are mavakshim and mitzapim abal hasad. They're all mavakshim. They're all begging, and they're all looking to the bal hasad. Sheyuchlas aseg b'tzarech tikuna. That the bal hasad should be misaseg, should become occupied with their tikun. V'yeish neshama she tikuna ite misa shel echad, and there is a neshama. There are neshamas that the tikun depends upon. Somebody in the world dying, like a mitzvah or some mitzvah to be performed by somebody amongst the living in the world, the avoid of somebody in the world, the neshamas whose tikkun depend upon on others who are still in the world of the living. And anybody who wants to strengthen himself, who has the courage. To accept this responsibility to be the Baal Hasada, the master of the field. To be a very strong person, a Gibor Chayel, and a Chacham, and a Tzadi Godom Oid. He has to be a very, very great person. And sometimes there's a Baal Hasada 
שאני יוכל לגמר העניין כי אם אם יסוסו הוא יכול רק להפנש את העניין של להיות מסק על הנשמס בעיה זו נדף ואפילו לזה צריך להיות גודל מאוד even for this that tzaddik even the one who gives his life up tzaddik li azgod al-ma'ayi has to be very great ki yesh kama vakama gadolim because there are many gadolim sha'afilu misosim lo yoyilu that even giving themselves up giving their lives up even that will not ultimately be bring a to'elas to the neshamas that need a tikkun rakim yesh odom godlo muflag b'mayla ma'ayid ma'ayid only and Odom Godlum Muflug Bemaila Maoid Maoid Yochel Ligma Mashatzarch Bechayim Chayusa can finish, can complete Mashatzarch, what he needs to complete Bechayim Chayusa even while he's alive. That's what Rabbi Natali was referring to. Even Bechayim Chayusa without dying. Ki Harbe Yisurim Udvarm Koshim Oivan Allah. And this great tzaddik must suffer terribly, must go through terrible suffering. But because of his godless, he's able to survive all of the yisur, all of the suffering. And he takes care of the field, and he does what's necessary for the field. And when he zayche to help the neshamas, will achnis him to bring them back into the field. As I tell you, the yafim ha'ayid lehispal. Then it's a very, very good time to daven. Because I had tefila al tikkun. You said that moment when the neshamas are able to enter into the field to return to the field. So I had tefila al tikkun. Then davening is the way it's supposed to be. V'zeh ha'bal ha'sodeh, and the bal ha'sodeh who mashgiach u'mishtadel tamid lahashka es elonis lagadlam. The bal ha'sodeh is constantly tending to the trees, and watering them, and nurturing them. U'b'shah tikkuni ha'sodeh, and all of the other tikkunim that are necessary for the field. Laharchi ka elonis zemize, harchoka haroi. And of course, in the field of souls, the trees have to be far enough one from the other. Because otherwise, if they're too close, then one tree will weaken the tree next to it. They have to be distanced. They have to be, they have to be a certain distance apart. Sometimes the Baal HaSodeh has to behave towards somebody who is a Makar of Godel. He has to distance him. He has to move him away. He has to push him away for some time. In order that the other person, the other soul, shouldn't become weak. And no. Shekshah Neshomas Ois and Peiris. Because we're not explaining anything now. This is Say Dei Say, this every word. Just to try to to hear the words. And then we'll learn the Kut HaLoch as Himitz Hashem. Veda. And you should know, Shekshah Neshomas Ois and Peiris. That when the souls are producing fruit, that means when the neshamas are oisin with sinus shalmokim, they're doing, they're accomplishing what they need to accomplish, and obeying Hashem's will. As I meir in ene bal hasada, and the eyes of the bal hasada light up when the neshamas, when the ilonas are growing properly, and they're producing good fruit. When the followers of the Baal Hasad are behaving in such a way, 
then the eyes, as I meir in the balasada, then the eyes of the balasada begin to shine. When the eyes of the balasada are shining, they could see a very great distance. And they could see to the place that they need to see. And this is what is alluded to in Chumash as state Saifim, the field of those who have vision. Then the Baal Soda has great vision, and he's able to see, to see beyond his place and his time. But if Khalila. If Khalila, the trees, the Nishamas are not Aisin Vitsanis Bar, Khasu Shalom Azai, this Khashkim ain't of them the Balasadh's eyes are darkened, are dimmed. Khasu Shalom. Zebakin is this what's alluded to in the Mishnah as Stay Baikim. Stay Baikim, which the Bhatanur explains over there, the Stay Baikim is where they used to go with the mace. Uh, they used to go with the mace outside the Beis Akvaris and the Oilum would get together there they didn't have funeral chapels and the Oilum would get together over there and it was a place where the, where the people would cry, they would cry over the maze so there's a field that's called the field of vision or of the visionaries and when the Nishamas are ice in Paris so then the eyes of the Balasada are shining with that vision to see beyond. But when the trees of the Nishamas are not Aysim B'Tan Shabakim, then this Chashchem Einav, then the eyes of the Balasada are darkened, which are called Stay Baichim from Tears, the field of tears. Ki Bechi Hu Kilkul Haruz. Because what distorts our vision? Crying, sadness. Sadness distorts a person's vision. When a person is sad, he doesn't see things for what they really are. Asus causes such a churban in a person that he can't see. He can't see how beautiful the field is, how beautiful other Jews are. He can't see how beautiful he is. He can't see the beauty of the tzaddik. He can't see the beauty of Eretz Yisrael. He can't see the tachlis. When a person is sad and he cries, he doesn't see things correctly, he sees things in a distorted way he has what Rabbi Nachman talks about double vision double vision is the opposite of Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad when a person lives every moment of his life with belief in the Rabbi Shalom and belief in the Tachlis then he lives a life that's filled with Simcha he lives a life without tears and when his eyes are clear, he doesn't have double vision. He sees Hashem Lokeinu Hashem Echad. That everything is coming from Hashem. Hashem Echad. He sees the Tachlis. Because crying is Kilkal Haruz. Crying ruins one's vision. Crying distorts the way we see things. It ruins our way of seeing things crying as it says in Kahalas that the clouds came the clouds returned after the rain and Chazal explained in Gemara Shabbos that when there's rain when there are tears then v'shovu ha'ovim then the eyes are clouded. When there's Geshem, when their eyes are pouring with tears, sadness brings to a cloudiness of vision. Crying in sadness distorts one's eyesight, not to see things in the right way. Uchsha'ein of me'irais, but when the when his eyes are shining, when the Balasada's eyes are shining, 
and they're able to then see then they have the eyes of the state siphon the eyes of the visionary the eye is not only that they're not limited in their eyesight in their ability to see but just the opposite the eyes are, are shining with light to see things in the most extraordinary way which I've mentioned many times over the years how in Vayel Moshe the Satan Rav Sluss only writes that Rabbi Nachman the eyes of Rabbi Nachman were unique and the Ruach HaKadosh of Rabbi Nachman from among all the Talmud of Hashem what Rabbi Nachman spoke to the last generation that he saw us because Rabbi Nachman was saying things that couldn't be understood in his time and especially before he died and his eyes were filled with this light he was looking at the end of time at the last generation and that's why we, one of the reasons why we see how Rabbi Nachman's Torah is shaking up the world now Mabish, more than ever before but it's impossible to understand I'll be tevah, what's happening with Rabbi Nachman and the tikkunim that the tzaddik that the, that the Baal Hasad is making the ain of me'iras more than ever before his eyes are shining in the state say from the field of vision and Rabbi Nachman saw then and we see now thousands upon thousands and thousands of neshamas that are, that are looking for a tikkun through Rabbi Nachman and it's increasing exponentially this is we haven't even seen what they call the tip of the iceberg not even the beginning of the tikkun not even the beginning that neshamas who can't find themselves anywhere in the world of Moshaychus, that they feel drawn to that place where all of this is unfolding and when the eyes of the Baal are shining the eyes of the state siphon of the field of vision. There's even an expression. Isn't that an expression in English? Somebody's field of vision, don't they? Right? There's such an expression. As a yochel is stakable chol echad vechad, when the tzaddik's, when the balasada's eyes are shining in such a way with the koyach of the state siphon, as a yochel is stakable chol echad vechad, then he's able to look at each and every person. He's able to look at each and every Jew and to bring each and every Jew to his Tachlis. Which means not so much to look at the face of each person but to look at the words of each person. He's able to gaze upon the words of each one of us and to see what's missing in the words, in the tefillah. Because this person's davening, he's saying words, but the words are still far from the tachlis. And the person is far from being connected to his tachlis. Then the Baal Hasod is mevi'oi el tachlis. The work of the Baal Hasod is to bring this person back to remember his tachlis. So that the words that he says should be words that are filled with tachlis. And then the Dibur is Kahagin Bishlaimus. And then Rabbi Nachman talks about Dibur. He talks about speech. And how speech, how Dibur can come from different parts of who we are. And he speaks about the Tikkunim 
of Dibur of speech and how and how it's possible and necessary for a person to say such words in such a way that come from such a deep place inside of himself that there is an unbelievable ahav and his kashus between the words and the person that it's come out impossible for the words to be separated from the person and the words attach themselves and embrace the person Skip to Ais Dalit, to Ais Gimel rather. Because the focus of Rabbi Nassim's Torah is not going to be, in this particular Torah that we're going to be doing, the Tils Daim Shachris, is not on Dibur and Tfil. It's on what Rabbi Nachman continues with in Ais Gimel. Let's just do a little bit. Vida, and you should know. She Bechina Zoy, Hainu Bechinas Echad. To have single vision and to be able to be in that place that's called Echad Zo Bechines HaTachlis that's Bechines HaTachlis now all the Baal HaSoder wants to do is to bring the Nishamas to their Tachlis and the Tachlis is Kuloi Echad. The Tachlis begins with Echad, everything begins with Echad. And the Tachlis of all that exists is to return to Echad, to that clarity of vision. <coughs> Which leads to perfected davening, perfected speech. So this is what the Baal Asad is struggling to accomplish, to bring each and every Jew to understand his tachlis. Shukulai echad. The tachlis is echad. Even though we become lost in the pulas and mishtanais and the confusion, but the tachlis is echad. And the tikkun of each nasham depends upon returning to that Recognition and understanding of the Tachlis, which is Kulay Echad, which brings to the perfection of Tvila of Davening, of Dibur. Vidash, Shebechina Zu, Haino Bechinis Echad, Zu Bechinis HaTachlis. Kemesh Kosov, as it says in Posik, Bayamahu Yashem Echad, Shmechad, that's the Tachlis. Bayamahu Yashem Echad, Shmechad, Bayamahu, Haino HaTachlis. Who is the Tachlis? Who begins Kulay Taif? And the Tachlis is Kulay Taif. In the Stay Boichim of this world, in the field of tears of this world, of misery and of suffering in this world, we don't see that Tachlis. It's hard to see the Tachlis is being Echad and Kulay Taif. And because of that, there's so much crying and there's atzvus because we forget the tachlis. And that's why the world is a stay boichim. It's a field of crying, of tears. The Balasada has the ability to help us become tzayfim, to return to the field of vision and to correct the impaired vision that sees things without the tachlis. And it gets stuck in the way things look as opposed to where things are going. The tzaddik, the Indian of the tzaddik, the tikkun of the tzaddik is to bring us to this bechin of tachlis. The problems begin with the base of Bereshis, because base is two. And that's what this world is. It's a world of double vision, of confusion, of two. And therefore it's possible for a person to see 
to look at the world in a completely, completely distorted way. Echad is Kulay Taif. The one who sees Echad is Kulay Taif, knows that everything is Taif. Ki Echad hu Kulay Taif. One is Kulay Taif. What do you mean by Yamahu Yashem Echad? What do you mean? On that day he will be one, and now he's not one. The Gemara says, Of course Hashem is one, but in the world that we live in, it's hard for us to see this. So we have, therefore, we have a brach that we make when something seems to us to be bad. We can't lie, this hurts us. It looks bad. So when something is, looks to us, it's terrible, and there's death, so there's a bracha dynamics. That we accept Hashem's judgment, that He's the true judge. We don't see the taif in it, we try to believe. As Rabbi Nachman says, soon we close our eyes, we squint to try to see further than what's in front of us. When you're trying to see something far away, to focus on something beyond what is in front of you, you have to close your eyes. It's the need of closing the eyes by Shema. Because then we say, Shema Yisrael Shem Akhani Hashem, Echad. Not to get lost in the state Baruchim, to be able to have the eyes of the, of the state Tzayfim. The Eidna Mavach Lerot Dainam is Halat Toiva Toiva Meitiv. So in this world, which is split, which is with the letter Beis, so when something looks to us, we try to be, we believe in Hashem, but it looks bad, so we say Dainam we accept Hashem's judgment. When something is toiva nigla, when it's revealed good, then we say then we say toiva meitiv. I will also the Gemara says yevarch halakol toiva meitiv. But in the future, everything will be toiva meitiv. Nimsa shebechinas echad hu atachlis. Nimsa, the Gemara is telling us that bechinas echad hu atachlis. That by yomahu you Hashem echad by yomahu. The echad is the tachlis to come to that tachlis. Echad is the Tachlis. Who kulay toif? Ka Tachlis who kulay toif? The Tachlis is kulay toif. Ka feel a call at Saurus for Yisun Vairos, or even a lot of because even all the Saurus and the misery and the suffering that we go through, Chasu Sholem, in Yistakal ala Tachlis, if a person is able to be in that place of Echad, the Tachlis, Bevada and Rose Cloud. With the eyes, with the state stuff, and there's no crying. Then he's able to have the vision to see that it's cool like toiv, that it's echad. Fak toiv is gedolus, toiv is gedolus. Ki bevada kol yisurim boim bekavona. Now Hashem is brought to also because certainly all of the suffering and whatever we go through is letoiv. I say no anitzchis. It's for our eternal good. Im la haskiro sheyoshe b'tshu. Either somehow that through this the person will do tshuva, in the morik avanosov, or to purify him, to cleanse him of his sins. Him kena yisurim him toivus gedolus. If we yisurim a toivus gedolus, but when someone tells you here in this world that the yisurim they're really good for you, you just roll your eyes. Your eyes are not shining, are not mirrors. <laughs> the eyes just roll. Yeah, this is for my good. Shkayer. <laughs> How about I do you some good also? <laughs> you're doing this, uh, you're doing me a taiva. Im kenei sum him taivas gedolus. Ki kavanas Hashem is brochu bevader achle taiva. Nim se shebechol haros vi yeshum sheish lo adam chasu shalom. Im yistakal al tachlis. Im yistakal al tachlis. Haynu kavanas Hashem is brochu. Kavanas mevatel himself to the tachlis. Then lo yilo yisurim klal. Then he won't have any yisurim at all. Like other rabbis, so Rabbi Nachman said this Torah the day after he was speaking about his Yisur. Like other rabbis, Yismali Simcha Megol Rach Megol Rav Hatayv will be filled with Simcha Megol Rav Hatayv. She yistake but Tachlis a Yisur in Halalu. Ki Tachlis ukulay Tayv kulay Echad. Bemis ein Shum Rabba Oylem Rakulay Tayv. Rakulay Tayv. Everything is Tayv. Now, how to, how to lift our eyes up to such a place? What does that mean? How to see that way? 
It says in the Pesach, Sum to lift your eyes up to heaven. Which doesn't mean the Svarim say, it's in the Slanim of Svarim, it doesn't mean that you look, that you have to look up to the sky. Sum means that a Jew has to have Himmel Dika Eugen. Sum that the eyes have to be lifted up to a higher place, from the rolling eyes to eyes that are looking at the Tachlis. And when a person's eyes are Himmel Dika Eugen, when his eyes are Shemayim Dik, when he has Shemayim Dika Eugen, eyes that are Shemayim Dik, that means that his eyes are always looking to see to the end of the story to the Tachlis, to the Echad. And the Echad, the Tachlis, is Kulay Taif. Kulay Taif. When a person can see everything in that way, from the perspective of this Dei HaTzayifem, then he sees his mis- misbattle to the Tachlis, and he has no Yisurim, and it's Kulay Taif. This is the Indian of closing our eyes. By Shema Yisrael Hashem Hakan Hashem Hakan, why Jews died, Al-Kiddush Hashem. And saying those words, Shema Yisrael Hashem Hakan Hashem Hakan. And we should be zeichah to see the Tachlis while living and being healthy and well to the 120. Amen.